Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host Gary LaRude and special guest Paul Blunt, President and CEO of Custom Mimic. Welcome back to the show again. Thank you for having me. As IMS is in Boston this year, we thought it was only fitting that we have a local leading device manufacturer on the show and discuss okay. how things are going in the market. Great, thank you. Since last time, you've released a record number of products in a short amount of time. Okay. How do you keep up that aggressive pace and still maintain the quality that you're known for? Well, um, we're growing fast. So we've been able to hire a lot of seasoned veterans, which means you know they hit the ground running, yeah. and it ma makes it a lot easier. We've also hired younger people as well, so we're really rounding the team out. But I would think I think the big thing for us is efficiency. Being a small company, we're able to really leverage the automation. So everything's fully automated. All the measurements are done, which means that uh, I mean the data sheets practically make themselves. It's it's nice and easy. It's a it's a great flow that we have, and so as a result, in to out is a very short space of time. And obviously, being small, we do. Uh, you know, put a lot of different parts on a mouse when it goes out, which means that you can get a lot of parts back in and then get them out into the market. So it's a, it's a good time for us, it really is. Well, you mentioned the growth, and I had the opportunity a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago to see your facility and the expansion. Talk a little bit about that expansion, what you've done there, what you're adding, and uh, what it means for your customers. Sure, definitely. Um, uh, we doubled our space in the last three months. We went from 11,000 to 20,000 square feet. We built another lab, uh, which means we've now got a, a very big engineering lab, and we've, uh, we've actually taken the two previous labs and turned them into a standalone package production test and dye production test and what that allows us to do well first of all with the extra space we can hire more people which means more products always like that but then also we now have space to buy more auto handlers more auto probers and obviously what that means is reduced lead time for our customers more products coming through and so it's definitely you know we invest heavily in our own future and so that's been a, a really good way of moving and going very well so there's been a lot of mergers and acquisitions on the semiconductor front. How mm -hmm. are you protecting your customers from obsolescence and helping them navigate all that? Yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a great question. I mean, our industry has been really hammered over the last sort of five or ten years with obsolescence. And especially for a lot of our customers, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of work in the aerospace and defense fields. We're doing a lot of work in the instrumentation fields. These these companies really want to create products for 10, 15 years, and they're seeing products going obsolete every other day, or it seems, uh, it's, it's crazy. So uh, what we felt as, as a uh, responsible supplier, we felt that what we should do is, as we have a part that is doing well, we created what we call an alternate program, where as we have a part that's doing well, we clone it onto another foundry and another process. And the two are ostensibly the same part. They have different part numbers. You'd never be mixed up as to which one you were getting. But essentially, what that means is that you have some built-in protection from obsolescence. Uh, you know, we don't have any issues with the supply chain, but if something ever did happen, then we have a secondary part that you could plug right in. And more importantly, if you wanted to, you could even qualify both parts at the beginning and give yourself some sort of obsolescence protection almost. So that we see as a responsible supplier that that is what we should be doing for our customers to give them faith that they, they will be able to uh, create these systems. Well, that's impressive. Thank you. We have, as Pat mentioned, IMS coming up in just <laughs> about a week. Yep. What are you going to be featuring at the show and any uh, special announcements will you be making? Yes, definitely. Obviously, it's a home show. Uh, we've got the big we've got a big 20 by 20 booth we're very excited with over 170 standard products now it's hard to pick your favorites as to which ones to push we have about three that i that are my favorites for for bringing to the show we've got a new dc to 20 gigahertz voltage variable attenuator mm. which is being well received we have a 2 to 20 gig driver the 295 which has got low noise figure across the entire band it's got nice gain good power uh, it's a really nice, easy to use part. And then finally, we've got a brand new part, which I'm desperately trying to push through and get through uh, before MTT starts, uh, which is a DC to 70 gigahertz uh, broadband wow. distributed amplifier. It's wow. very flat, really good return loss. And you know we're seeing a dearth of parts in the sort of 40, 50, 60 gigahertz range. We have so many people asking us for them, and we are developing them. This is the first one to come out, so it's a big one for us. So we're we're very excited about MTT this year. Yeah, yeah. those are some great products. Thank you, thank you. So, what are some of the key technologies you're investing in for future market growth? Well, obviously, you know one of the big drivers right now in in any field, you know 5G, but also uh, a lot of our other uh, fields. Everyone wants to go surface mount. 
So we are actively investing in trying to uh, stretch the performance of surface mount packages to 50, 60 gigahertz. We have several flows going right now, different techniques, but essentially our goal is to be able to, we're up to about 30 gigahertz right now, we have everything packaged, now to get to 40, then to get to 50. And that will benefit, as I say, the 5G people, but also the test and measurement people. They really want to have a much more better flow through their, uh, through their product sure. lines and get their costs down so they can have uh, excellent products. So that's one thing. The ultra low LNAs that we have, uh, the 283s are doing really well at S band and C band. We're developing new ones now for both X, KU, K and KA band. Wow. The idea is to have a whole suite of parts that really push the boundaries of noise figure. And then finally, it's been a long time coming, but our GAN mixers are transitioning to production. And so we have those, they'll be out later in the year, and we're even doing low phase noise amplifiers to drive those, because obviously the drive levels are considerably higher. So along those lines, you know, just a broad market portfolio of, of just about every product you could possibly want. Well, so. maybe we can get an article on the GAN mixers. Definitely, definitely. As, uh, as we have them out and characterized, we'll be more than happy to share them with you. So it sounds like with all the activity, that uh, empty space that you're expanding into won't be empty for long. Yes, that's true. So before we go, remind us what booth you'll be in at IMS, how people can find you. We'll be at booth 1350. Excellent. Well, thanks very much for taking some time from your busy schedule to give us an update. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you.